This part work has been supplied to me free of charge from fanhome.com. Please pop along to their website and see all of the other build up part works that they have to offer, as well as other collections of collectible things. Thank you once more to Fanhome for providing me with this kit. I hope you enjoy the build. Hello, I'm Chris. This is Gross Models, and welcome to the start of a new build series. Uh, this is the build of Robocop from the films. Robocop and Robocop 2 and the other ones and the series but mainly from the first film because frankly it's the best one. Uh, so the journey begins here build the legendary cyborg Robocop yes uh, so in this series we are going to be building him him with the gun and the gun even hides in his tie just like it does in the film I don't think it ejects but it can be placed in there or in his hand uh, so yes, this is a build series from Fanhome. Uh, Fanhome are sending it to me free of charge. So very, very big thanks to Fanhome for enabling me to build this series for them. Um, so yes, uh, this is basically it. You can access all your information online as you can for all of the Fanhome series. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, first of all, we'll have a look at the poster and uh, the sort of looking at the series magazine. Yes, from MGM Robocop. I shall have to go back and watch it again. It's been a while since I've seen this, seen the film. So uh, yeah, Defender of the Law. Uh, step by step assembly, obviously in the magazines. Easy construction. The first issue is in fact the helmet, although not the face. That comes later. Um, but yeah, articulated model, so you can pose him however you like. Uh, removable gun from the thigh holster, which is a very cool idea, and that's great. Uh, metal and injection molded plastic, same as most of these builds. Uh, he stands uh, two feet tall, 62 centimeters tall, so basically one third scale, uh, all pretty much the same scale as Iron Man. I don't know exactly how tall he's going to be next to Iron Man, but pretty similar. So uh, yeah, uh, gadgets pay three reproduced from those seen in the original film. He's got his data port, stabby thing. Um, carefully applied metallic grey paint. Uh, yeah, all interesting stuff there. Uh, what we got the back is there. Ah, upgrade to the premium offer. Yes, uh, as with lots of these things, for a little bit extra each month, you can upgrade to the premium stand. Basically, it's an illuminated stand, similar to the one I did on the Iron Man build, but obviously with the OCP logo on there. Quite cool. Uh, I am not going to be receiving that, I believe. So uh, I will make do with no stand at all. Or oh, Maybe like Iron Man, they'll have a, a, a smaller version of the stand. I don't really know yet. Uh, let's have a look in the next section. We've got stuff in the magazine. Uh, the Legend of Robocop. Uh, history, 100 Years of Robots. That's so going to be about robotics. Cutting edge technology. Obviously the assembly guide in there as well. Uh, you know the Prime Directive. Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. And number four is... Classified if you haven't seen the film, it's about not hurting OCP basically. So, yeah, there we go. That's that. Uh, by subscribing, you will receive these exclusive free gifts. There's a uh, pretty standard for a lot of these part work things, they seem to be uh, posters, t shirt, cap. Uh, this one comes with a power bank, a rechargeable battery pack for you know charging your mobile phone and things. Uh, moderately useful. Pretty much everybody's already got something similar to that, but the, the cap and the t-shirt are certainly very nice. The posters are normally quite nice as well, so uh, yeah. There you go. For free, you can't really argue, can you? And we also get, obviously, the entire big poster of the model. Robocop in all of his glory on there. So uh, yeah, that is the, the look at the series. Uh, it's going to be quite cool. It's going to be very interesting to build. Um, more obviously human than the Terminator build that I did, but similar sort of thing to the uh, Iron Man. Probably similar articulation. Obviously less internal panels and flaps and things. So I don't know. It's obviously got the leg thing that opens, but it's going to be quite cool to build him anyway. So. Let's have a look. This is, as I mentioned, issue one. So we'll start with issue one. Uh, in the magazines, we have, obviously, as it said, the history of Robocop. 
So you can read about the genesis of Robocop there, the idea behind the film. There's going to be some pictures from the film and oh, probably some behind the scenes, maybe as well. I don't really know. But there we go. Uh, then we get the build series showing you what parts you receive and how to assemble them to make the, uh, the first part. Uh, yeah, quite a, a breakdown here as to what it's going to be and where it goes in case you weren't sure where the head fits onto a body of a cyborg. So there we go, side view of that, and that's how it's going to be from the finished model. Nice. Uh, robots in the ancient world in the uh, 100 years of robotics, basically starting off 100 years ago, with some robots, technically robots, not, uh, not humanoid robots, obviously, but... Uh, Robotic type things, machines that sort of think a little bit. Uh, transhuman, obviously it's the future of robotics, it's not cutting edge. Maybe future of, I'm not sure. Uh, 2045, yeah, so that's uh, pushing it forward a little bit. But we've got some bionic arms. State of the art robotic arms, state of the art in 2023. Anyway, maybe in a few years it'll be different. I mean, it won't really know. Uh, so yeah, there we go, then we get a picture on the back and the logo on the back back. So let me clear this out of the way. I'll look at the parts and we'll see what it is that we're building this time. Actually, before I do that, let me bring in the parts because we'll, sh we'll show you how they're packaged, first of all. Uh, the first few issues normally come on a card because it looks nice if it was in a news agent, then people would pick it up and see what it's like. Uh, so in here, we've got obviously all the parts, the big helmet bit with classic interior. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let me get this unpackaged and we'll start the build. Right, so the parts supplied. We've got a nice shiny helmet. Not much to say about that, but uh, whether it's going to need any weathering, I'm not sure about. Um, it could do with something, I think. It's just a little bit too nice and shiny, but at one point it was nice and shiny, so I might well leave it and see how it goes. Uh, we've got the plastic bits for the inside to the head, as well as the visor and neck pieces and bits for the side, and a couple of magnets. Uh, now, this is quite interesting because it means that the helmet can be very easily removed to show, obviously, the face underneath. How it's going to work, I don't know. I don't think there's face with eyes. I think it's only lower face. So I'm not entirely certain unless there's an upgrade or a modification to do it to give the full face. We'll see what happens. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to start off as we mean to go on with the first step, which is basically most of these black bits. Uh, the two head halves go together like that, but they don't just go together like that. We've got to put the top magnet in the top. Uh, we've got to put the shaped piece where the um, neck is obviously going to connect up into that bit, get it the right way around, the long, larger bit at the back. That fits into a groove all around there, like so. And then the neck piece goes on the bottom bit, doesn't go in further as I thought it was going to. It connects up just on the ridge around there like that. And that one obviously doesn't pop out. So that goes in there like that, and then the other side holds together in exactly the same way. The neck piece protrudes from the bottom there. You've got the middle bit with the hole in the indentation in it, ready for that to go on there. And the magnet is visible at the top there. Uh, that is held together by four AP screws. Now, screws. Lots of different screws are going to be used throughout the build. If you're not familiar with the way these work, uh, what happens with these is they are all labelled, come in little bags with labels on them. AP, obviously on that one. Uh, the A bit is the type of screw it is, they just call it A. The P bit is the important bit. Uh, that's the bit that says this is going into plastic. The thread of the screw will be a little bit different depending on if it's going into plastic or metal. Um, EM, for example, will be ones that go into metal. Uh, the screwdriver supplied in this issue is a bit rubbish. Uh, it does the job, but is not going to be comfortable 
many many hours of screws so I recommend um, either starting a different part work that's got a better screwdriver with it which is always worth doing anyway I've got a collection of screwdrivers from part works now some of them are really quite nice uh, or get yourself a decent screwdriver with like multiple tips that you can use for different parts of the build you'll probably only find yourself using one or two of them for most of it but uh, it will be a, a more comfortable experience for you uh, I should think I will probably use this one and get that screw to work uh, just for this issue and we'll almost certainly be using a different one when I return for issue two uh, purely because it's not the best of screwdrivers the one thing that this this part seems to be let down on is the uh, the quality of the, the screwdriver uh, so let's find out the fourth screw I haven't put in is this one at the back here oh it's not there it's somewhere there it is Apologies for this already, if you can't see what's going on. Um, it's a problem with part works in general, but these part works in particular, uh, when you've got black parts going together, and obviously even a black screw being used to put it together. Um, might not even be, I might have used that screw hole already. I'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, when you're putting in screws into these things, yeah, that one hasn't got a screw in it, the other one did have. Uh, it's always a good idea to get all of the screws in a bit first and then go back and tighten them all up uh, because it's nicer to the, the kit to ease parts together more gently See, that's not quite gone together probably that's a little bit high on that side yeah so where I haven't tightened down any of these screws it's much easier to get back to groups with it, loosen them all a little bit more, but what a trying is proving to be a little bit of a problem, uh, so then you can loosen the screws when you need to, there you go, that wasn't fully down there, now that is, and parts slip, slip together much better, uh, yeah you don't want to just tighten one all the way down and then be stuck with it later on. I will remind you of that probably every time I'm putting in more than one screw. But uh, yeah, there we go. That's that. So then when they're all lined up nicely, you can come back and tighten them all up. Like so. So there we have the first part put together. We've got the next bit all in one piece and then obviously seeing where the face is going to fit. Again, it could do with some maybe some weathering and detail on there. We'll see how it goes. I'm probably never going to take the helmet off. So it doesn't worry me a great deal. But uh, there we go. So that's that aside for now. Uh, next up, we have put in these side pieces on, on there. They do have a slot and a bayonet piece that goes in there. Uh, this is uh, some more... AP screws. No. Nope. Never lie. These are the QP screws. A little bit different, but still going into plastic. Although the helmet piece is metal, uh, these exterior detail pieces are plastic. Uh, you will pretty much always get one extra screw in each type to what you actually require. So uh, always keep your extra screws because you never know when you might need one. Uh, you may you may have a pack missing. It's unlikely, but it might happen. Uh, in which case, if you've been saving up screws from the front, from the top of the build, then you'll have enough spares. Uh, you can always contact Fan Home. They will send out any parts that are missing very easily and very quickly. So that's not a problem. But it's worth keeping hold of them anyway. You may lose one while you're putting it in. You may drop it on the floor and not be able to find it. So keeping the spares is an obvious plus point. And you never know when you're going to need it. These ones have quite a big head, like a built-in washer on them. 
obviously because that's all that's holding this extra piece on the edge. So there we go, that's that. Probably could have been molded in, but it's nice to put things together, isn't it? So there we have those two on there. Uh, only a couple of bits more to do on this. We've got this bit and that to put together. Uh, so we are going to be attaching that onto there. With another AP screw. That's why there's two of those left. Because one for now. And one for later. Uh, this is probably going to be slightly problematical. Because that's a magnet. And it's going to steal the screw from my screwdriver. Or jump up like that. So let's see. We're going to push that. Through there first, I think, would be the easiest way. Hold the screw on the end, get it through the hole there, like so. And I should be able to make sure that the screwdriver is in place on the end of the screw. Somehow. Bit like that, maybe. And then we'll see if we can get that lined up and screwed onto there. A little bit more tricky to do than some of the other parts, but once you get it lined up, it should be okay. That will hold that onto there. Uh, and then we need the M screws, the EM screws, because we're going to be using, going through the plastic part into the metal part on there. Uh, it has an arrow, uh, and the arrow... I shall have to read the words and find out. The arrow mark 13 is in the same direction as the large one on the helmet. The one in the helmet? Oh, there's a big arrow there. Look, look, it's huge. So this will point that way, like so. I don't know why that matters, but it obviously does. So this will fit into there with the two screws. Again, going to be a little bit tricky getting them past the magnet, I'm sure. Yep, a little bit tricky. So what I shall do again is try and do that before putting it in place. I'm going to use a pair of tweezers there to grab the screw. If I can. Good magnets. Let's try on the other side. By grabbing that, get the right way round. Probably should have done this the other way around. Would have made more sense. So that will go in there. Yeah, it's not actually working very clearly. What I'm going to do is remove that from there. Leave that to one side momentarily. We'll get this fitted first, so the arrow towards the back like that. That way around, I'll put this in first. Because it's much easier to do that without the big magnet in the way messing things around. We get both screws in, we can make sure we tighten them up. Going into metal is much easier and nicer than going into plastic. You know you're not going to strip the threads of the screws by tightening it up too much. So tighten it up enough. That will go in there. Then we can go back and do this again. On there you go. Find the right bit in the screw. And that will go onto there that will tighten down into that little plastic bracket and there we have the magnet fitted into there uh, the visor will then fit onto the front of here uh, it will only go one way round because of the shaping of it so you can't get it that way round for instance it has to be that way round and that just pops in place. 
goes behind the little clips. That's there on there. So you can then see out. And then we have the final magic bit, putting these two together. Just like so. So yeah, there we have it. You can see at the back of his head. Does that feel the right way round? Does that feel like I've got it the wrong way round somehow? I don't know. That feels like it's probably right. It would putting that the other way round wouldn't made any difference to that. So yeah, there we have the magnet doing its job, holding things together, ready for his chin to come on there. Does his chin stick forward a lot? No, it doesn't. Hmm, something on there doesn't feel quite right, but I don't know. That would be that way round, whichever way round I did it. Maybe, maybe I wasn't fully on the bracket that on there like that. Let's manipulate. Ah, there we go. I wasn't in the right place. So there we have it now attached on there properly. Room for his face to go underneath there. And that is that on there, nice and secure, but will come apart when you need it to. But uh, for most of the time, that's going to live just like that. So keep the screws safe for another time. Put them in a little bag, put them in a box, keep them together. And uh, yeah, keep the screwdriver for whatever use you might have for that. But yeah, there we have issue number one of building your very own Robocop. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comments what you think about the build. And so far, if you like the series, if you've seen the film, if you haven't seen the film, watch it anyway. But yeah, I shall see you very soon, very soon, very shortly and quite soon for issue number two, uh, which is a foot or start of a foot. So thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.